Oh, thanks very much. Um, yeah, exciting to, uh, to share this story with you. It um, taps back through my experience searching for porphyries through the East Lachlan, and uh, we're certainly participating uh, with, this, with this portfolio in terms of a renaissance which is happening and unfolding um, for porphyry discovery through, through the East Lachlan. So I'll go through the uh, Magmatics uh, target portfolio and our strategy uh, in the East Lachlan, uh, which is really um, gets forgotten, uh, especially the West Australians, but it, it you know, hosts Cadia East, which is Australia's largest producing gold, uh, gold mine currently, at uh, 1.4 billion free cash flow last year, uh, 32 million tonne uh, per annum um, operation, and other significant, um, globally significant mining operations in that area, uh, including North Parks and Cal. Uh, the advanced target portfolio that Magmatic has is uh, mainly a function of uh, counter-cyclical acquisition from goldfields back in 2014 when you remember all the majors were fleeing the country. Uh, but up until that point, goldfields had spent um, doing a lot of the, uh, building the data sets up um, and over $14 million of expenditure. Uh, so we're certainly not starting our journey in terms of building up those uh, data sets. We've got quite an advanced target portfolio and in my experience with the Alcane team and Ian Chalmers uh, in that Bodor area. So certainly I'll talk a lot of today about the Northern Molong Belt and the significance of that uh, along Stripe North from Cadia and the significance of the Bodor hit uh, in terms of showing the industry, uh, you know, what, what the surface expression is and the signature, which is a very unique signature as well. So Magmatic's extremely well placed uh, for near term uh, Cadia style discoveries in that area. But we're not the one trick pony, we've certainly got other um, pretty exciting uh, exploration assets. Um, again, a, a gold discovery hotspot coming out in New South Wales in the Parks Fault Zone, south of Alcane's Tommingley Gold uh, operations there. We're well funded, and uh, the usual disclaimer, your leisure. Uh, corporate snapshot. Um, we raised five million last week. Uh, we've got a lot of options in the money. We're going to be very well funded by mid-year by the looks of things. Uh, I came on a couple of weeks ago uh, into, there's been a few, uh, some shuffling uh, within the board there, but uh, really sort of good balance of skill sets there from what I can see. We've got um, a pretty tight uh, corporate structure as well, capital structure. And so just stepping back and look at the East Lachlan, so you can see um, the two main belts of interest include the Molong Belt, which is host Cadia Valley. That's where we go looking for gold porphyries. And I'll certainly talk a lot today about this area in the northern extent. There's a lot um, of convincing uh, overlay, overlaid evidence which suggests that the next major area along the Molong Belt of interest is this this northern uh, extends before it then uh, extends undercover um, uh, further to the north there. But uh, Magmatic also has ground, porphyry ground north of North Parks in this uh, Junine Aramine belt. We go looking for corpor, copper <laughs> porphyry uh, clusters in that area. And as I said, uh, the Parks project south in the, in the Parks fault zone, just south of Tomley Gold operations. But it's worth dwelling on Cadia East and the significance of that. Um, I mentioned some numbers, but it is the largest alkalic gold porphyry of, of its type ever, ever discovered. Um, it's Australia's top producing gold mine, um, and Ridgeway still, still is uh, the highest grade uh, gold uh, porphyry ever discovered. So very significant on the global, global scale. I'll talk a lot about um, this northern mole on belt opportunity we can see, I mentioned that uh, back uh, a few years ago, everyone fled, fled Australia, and now we're seeing the movement back of the majors, um, recognising the prospectivity, but also that uh, things can be done there, and uh, certainly sovereign risk-wise, this ad, uh, stacks up pretty well uh, for other porphyry, uh, for porphyry, porphyry trains globally. And touching again on um, the fact that, that we're really coming in at an advanced stage. It's an advanced target portfolio that we're now leveraging off and accelerating uh, our exploration from. So the gold, Goldfields did a lot of that baseline work for us and uh, some excellent data sets in which to, to, uh, to launch from. So the Northern Molong Belt, the boater discovery is obviously you know, once in a generation sort of event. Um, no one really saw it coming, although I spent you know, I uh, spent uh, nine years working in that corridor 
within the alkane team and lots of failed sort of drilling programs as we were drilling these pyrite um, bodies that we thought were upper level porphyry manifestations. But um, eventually we came down towards that boater area and there's something quite distinct uh, about uh, that boater area and the pyrite we were seeing there. Um, when we started to get to the level of sophistication of multi-element geochemistry, uh, porphyry pathfinder signatures, it all started to make sense. And so for me, the proof of concept that came through as part of that porphyry hit there um, really highlighted and, 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 and re-ranked a lot of the targets on this magmatic ground. So clearly, spatially, uh, magmatic has a very dominant position tenure-wise in, in this part of the world but it really comes back much more importantly to um, the level of that, those advanced targets. Uh, we started using uh, uh, MIMDAS geophysics, electrical geophysics, um, which is very successful in the Cadia Valley area and Newcrest are promoting the fact that that is uh, a very effective technique there. And what that's doing for us is incredibly powerful. Uh, we already like what we see, uh, for example, at this Lady Ilsa target, which is our most advanced northern mole long belt target. Um, it's a boater lookalike uh, from every sense in terms of low level gold and porphyry pathfinders um, mapped within RC drilling over about a two, 200 metre wide zone there. Uh, at this sort of stage in, of uh, exploration, it actually looks a little bit wider than boater. Um, and certainly it's consistent with the overall exploration model that we use for looking for the Cadia East uh, and these alkalic gold porphyries in the East Lachlan in terms of looking for this big mass of disseminated pyrite over the top of the, of the porphyry zones. So we're, we're ticking a lot of boxes here straight away, but the MIM, what the MIMDAS can do for us is then just start mapping that out in 3D. So the Difficult to see, obviously, from where you are, but there's some, the, the RC drilling uh, has defined uh, the boater lookalike in the case of Lady Il Ilsa there. Here, the chargeability image, again from the MIMDAS, is suggesting that that equivalent um, porphyry feature at Lady Ilsa compared to boaters probably about three times the width. So we're seeing a real scale jump uh, here. We know this is porphyry derived pyrite, you know. The proof of concept happened and we've drilled a lot of pyrite in that part of the world and uh, this is a real indicator in my mind that you're dealing with a fertile gold porphyry system. And what you also get with, Mim with Mim MIMDAS because um, Cadia systems have a heap of albite around the shoulders and over the top of them, it sets up a very resistive uh, backdrop. We're looking for resistive features underneath that pyrite halo and sure enough that's what we're getting. So we would have drilled this hole Regardless of this data set, it hasn't moved that much. We probably moved it slightly further east. This will happen next month. We'll start to drill these targets and understand it. But um, there's a lot of ducks lining up here, and this is sort of as close as it gets in, in my experience of uh, hunting for a K another Cadia East. And we can see, you know, this is much more akin, the scale of this now, to Cadia East. Um, this is a 500 metre scale bar there. This is five to 600 metres wide by the looks, that, that pirate halo over the top of this thing indicating preservation of the porphyry, which in these old fold belts we think a lot about, is the thing still intact? Clearly, the MINDAS data set that we're building is indicating we have an intact system on our hands. It's definitely got all the ingredients to be a bow to look like. We'd be happy with a bow to type hit at this point, but I think we've got something a much bigger scale on our hands here. And not to discount some of the other opportunities within the magmatic portfolio, we have uh, the north of North Parks, the Mile project, uh, where all the indications there suggest that we're dealing with another North Parks porphyry cluster. Uh, all of the known porphyry systems uh, in the East Lachlan and, and globally, many of them are uh, clustered by nature, so you don't end up with just one one Orby, so we feel um, like we've got quite a few shots, especially in that northern Mile Long Belt. And touching on the Parks Fault Zone, whereby you know, there's been some quite startling and, and fantastic hits uh, by the Alkane team south of Tomingley, uh, 80 metres, a bit over four grams, and, um, and so we, we feel like this is also well worth directing some, some of our attention towards, uh, because we've got 20, 20 kilometres of strike of these very similar looking uh, orogenic gold plays uh, with similar hits at equivalent level of expiration. 
when you compare uh, those areas. So the highlights are uh, very well placed. Uh, we've got the knowledge and the team uh, at, at the right time. The advanced target portfolio, we're not about to spend five years now building those data sets up. The Northern Molong Belt is emerging as a globally significant discovery hotspot for gold-rich porphyries. Cadia style things, they ask evidence for them still being preserved there. We're well placed uh, to be a dominant player uh, in, in that particular area, but we also have uh, a good strategic holding in the park's fault zone, and we're now accelerating activity. Thank you very much. <laughs>